here from building the X set. In this video, I'm going to be cutting up the Miata body and cleaning off the roller skate. Okay, so my garage is a total disaster. Uh, tools everywhere, crap everywhere from uh, getting the body removed. As you can see, I already got the, the front engine bay portion of the body cut off. Um, next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be basically cutting the body into about five, six more sections and then disposing of it. Reason I'm not selling the body, I've had it up on Craigslist uh, about a week now. Uh, one or two calls on it, but literally zero interest. So I cannot find, since I don't have a title to the body, I just have a bill of sale. I, the only junkyard I found that would take it um, required the title in my name. They would not accept a bill of sale. So uh, unfortunately with, with steel right now, it's $105 a ton is what I was quoted. Um, I thought the body weighed a thousand pounds. Now my understanding is that's actually the body with the doors, uh, seats, hood, trunk, all the body panels. As it is now about uh, four or 500 pounds. So I'm looking about 25, 30 bucks or so roughly to take the body to a junkyard. By the time I load it up, take it there, deal with the title issues, all that, trying to get the title, it just wouldn't be worth it. The power plant frame, I am going to be rolling this out in my driveway and taking a lot of uh, gunk degre engine degreaser and brake clean and basically cleaning this whole thing up and getting it uh, ready for disassembly. So let's get to it. good chunk of the unibody cut off the car. Most of it, as you can see, is sitting out in my driveway right now. Um, the process I used when I've seen online, a uh, variation of it, but I think it was very easy. Basically, um, make a cut, cut your engine bay off right, above, right before the firewall. The biggest uh, difficulty with cutting the frame off is the uh, tubular supports in the unibody. <clears throat> you, as you can see, you got a lot of layers of metal here, three layers of sheet metal here, three here, two here, three here. Those take the most time to cut through. Cutting through just the sheet metal, good sawzall blade, goes right through it. So cutting the front off and then cutting the rear off right before the, the back behind the seats works good then i as you can see these frame rails here are, are rather thin right behind the seat they get um substantially wider and you have to use a lot longer blade to be able to cut through um, you can see there's a few layers of sheet metal pressed together here um, but <clears throat> other than that it was it, that made it pretty easy to go through then once you get the rear cut off the car i basically once i was just about done cutting pushed the back of the car down to the ground then came through and cut it in half, right? Uh, basically starting at the uh, transmission tunnel here, all the way back through the rear of the car. What that left me with is basically two rear halves. These were very heavy, but um, um, I was able to lift them. So that's, that's really the, the key part here. Windshield frame also gets cut off. And there is the engine bay in the front there. So my last cut I'm going to do here is basically going to be um, starting just aft of the firewall and then going along through the transmission tunnel and then back out the other side. Um, that should leave this piece with uh, me the ability to lift it by myself or with someone helping me and the front piece by myself or with someone helping me. That'll leave me with one, two, three, basically five, six parts uh, for the car here, total cut up. Here's 
the body all cut up. Well, I'm definitely glad that's over. Time to find someone to get rid of it. So as you can see, there's a fair amount of gunk and burnt oil on this side of the block and down below here. Um, most of that, I'm assuming, is from the oil pan gasket here. There is some up above, but a lot of it, I think, was this filter that was loose and disconnected and didn't have any oil, and I think that was just spewing oil all over the side of the engine over here. As you can see up front here, quite a bit of residue on the pan, as well in the lower part of the block. Leak over there for sure. This side of the block on the driver's side, very clean. Obviously, valve cover leaks somewhere from the look of it, I'm guessing. Um, and then back here, there is quite a bit of residue because the drain for the transmission fluid on the pan was loose when I first got underneath the car. Also, ripped boot here and a lot of leak around here. The rear differential is fairly clean. A little bit of residue on the bottom. Some of that may be from trailing back behind the transmission there. As well as up here, there is a leak. Um, cam positioning sensor, something like that. Um, whichever one these, I believe that's this piece here, but not sure. Uh, must have a leak in it as well. skate is cleaner garage not much I was able to get the uh, Miata body cut up today and out of here as you saw had a put an ad on Craigslist in about an hour had a call and a guy saying hey I'll come pick it up so got that out of the driveway all good to go as you see transmission bell housing much cleaner the aluminum frame rail here is much much cleaner it's actually silver now not pure black uh, differential and the rear end here are cleaner they weren't super bad to begin with um, front end here I got some of the oil leak up in here cleaned off as well as you can't really see in the dark here the block a little cleaner the subframe here a lot cleaner suspension cleaner I'm not cleaning this to clean it as that is how the car is going to be left. I'm simply cleaning it so when I tear all these components off, it's just not a greasy, oily, grimy mess. So got a, quite a bit of oil residue out of here. The pan is now silver again. I can actually see the VIN number on the side of the pan. Uh, power steering rack was extremely dirty, still is, but much better. This hopefully will help when I'm disassembling it uh, to uh, make it much uh, cleaner when I'm handling parts and getting bolts off. So the next step that I'm going to go with in the car is I'm going to remove the drive shaft off the car and the power plant frame there, the rail, and start disassembling the rear end of the car. Basically all the subframe, A-arms, um, sway bars, everything like that is going to be removed, sandblasted, and powder coated. I'm going to be removing all the stock bushings, rubber bushings, and replacing. I think I'm going to go with uh, either Prothane or Energy Suspension. I've used the Energy Suspension Master Kits before on cars and been pretty happy with them. A lot of people say they squeak real bad. Um, if, you, if you apply the grease they give you, which is just nasty stuff, I don't think they squeak. They squeak a little bit, but not an amount that bothers me. Also, um, cars like this I do not ever drive in the rain or any weather so I don't have uh, that I've heard a lot of people complain of a couple of years in the rain and it deteriorates the grease and they have to pull it all apart regrease it or put zerk fittings in to, to maintain those I haven't had those issues but once again this car is going to be driven maybe 500,000 miles a year and never in any inclement weather after I get the rear end done uh, I'm going to do new, new coilovers as well all around 
Um, they're probably going to do adjustable height. I don't think I'm going to do any any dampening. Uh, I just have not in the past on a lower end, you know, sub thousand dollar set of coilovers seen the adjustable dampening be enough of a difference on a mainly street car that I think it's really worth it. Um, I just would rather invest in a, a good set of shocks and dampeners in that coilover system as well as with an actual good spring to it at the proper rate and a hopefully a match damper and spring set. Then after I have the, the, the rear end all powder coated, bushings in, suspension done, put it back together, then I'm going to remove the front of the car. Uh, I'm going to pull the engine off, pull the subframe pieces off, uh, pull the transmission out, have it cleaned up, painted, um, probably replace some seals on the engine, maybe some valve stem seals. I think that's one of the cause of my smoke burning. Maybe not, but it wouldn't be a bad idea just to do while I have some time while I'm waiting for the kit. So that's the plan moving forward. Next time I'm going to be focusing on uh, the dismantling of the rear end of the car and we'll go from there.